Hello, it's April 12th uh, in the evening. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to post these videos tonight after all, but I am um, going to use this video to preview the style and correctness readings. I know some of you have already read them and done your posting on the discussion board. Um, the uh, heart well in particular is so important for anyone doing composition studies to have read, but it is difficult in some weird ways, and so I um, want to address some of those difficulties here. Um, so, Hartwell, Grammar, Grammars, and the Teaching of Grammar. Um, pay attention to, he says there are two factions at the beginning, the magical thinkers and the alchemists, and um, so what the positions of those two groups of uh, compositionists or other researchers in other areas. Um, who those people are, what their positions are. Um, he gives us three meanings of grammar on the bottom of 566, and he's quoting that from someone um, writing in 1954, uh, W. Nelson Francis. I will point out that one of the meanings of grammar that he uh, quotes from Francis is that um, the, the school grammar, grammar three, um, <laughs> this makes me laugh. Okay, it's not funny. Okay, um, and uh, on the top of 567, he says, one, here's a good deal of criticism of teachers in English couched in such terms as, quote, they don't teach grammar anymore, end quote. And that that quotation was written in 1954. This article was written in, published in 1980, 85, I think. So keep in mind that time frame. Um, so there are three grammars that Hartwell borrows from Francis. He basically dismisses grammar three. He calls it usage. It has a lot to do with um, the video I just recorded about prestige, dialect, standard English, uh, class, power, all that stuff. So he doesn't even really deal with that kind of grammar, that kind of usage in his article. So just be aware that that's an absence that he tells you about. Um, to those three grammars, he adds grammars four and five. And for me, it helps to like paraphrase what the grammars mean or add the numbers when he's talking about them. Because um, he switches between like grammar one, which you could paraphrase as like native speaker grammar or like deep grammar, I, I, that's probably a term I'm misusing. Um, okay, so there's that way to help make sense of the article. Also, you can skim through quite a bit of it, um, like, oh, like 573, 574, um, he gets into linguistics, artificial intelligence, learning, philosophy, um, history of composition. So try to get the main ideas. Um, you don't have to read every single word in it. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about, uh, mention like a uh, way to get past some difficult parts. They're not really parts, but it's funny. I find his um, parenthetical citations in the text really distracting. I've never seen this style before. He'll have like he quotes from college composition communication, um, gives the issue number, the year in square brackets, and then the page number. Um, it's really weird and they're very long and intrusive citations. So once I realized that's a funny, that's giving me lots of signals I don't usually see. I'm just going to skip past those, then do that. But do note the, the years, the time frames that he's working with. Um, he also has tons of endnotes signaled by the little superscript um, endnote numbers. Um, what else about this one did I want to tell you? Um, highlighting where his main arguments are. Um, page 578 before he gets to grammar 5. Um, he, yeah, 578 and 579, if you're really getting lost, 
in the depths of this article, I would read those two pages and see if you can kind of reverse um, engineer your understanding of his argument from those pages out. Also, a good um, place to look for a writer's main claim is in their conclusion. Mm, this sort of has it, but it's kind of organized non-traditionally. I'm not explaining myself very well, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, what's the other one? Hartwell and Gorel. The Gorel article is definitely easier to read. Um, it's mainly concerned with grammar three, I think, if I'm remembering the Hartwell categories better. So these are very much related to the Delpit article that you read a couple of weeks ago about um, thinking about style is how we usually refer to uh, things like grammar and usage um, and sentence, like the construction of sentences, the word choices, things like that. Um, maybe it's a euphemism, but we'll, we'll talk about that as style and composition today. Um, also, I am going to post, um, we'll have posted by now, an excerpt from um, Joseph William's style Basics and Clarity and Grace, it's the correctness chapter that I use with my students to introduce this like meta-linguistic awareness when we start reading that book. That is a textbook for students and if you are interested in these topics of language and power, usage, etc., um, if you can give them the Williams chapter, Williams goes through the same ideas that Hartwell does and really focuses on Grammar 3, i.e. usage, more than Hartwell does. Um, so that might be a way to spark conversation. Don't give them the Hartwell article or um, and the Gorel articles for teachers, and so um, I think it's really useful for you guys, but not so much your students. So that's an idea for how to use this stuff to teach. Um, I look forward to seeing your comments about that, and I do still need to look at your comments about the graph and the swales. Uh, readings. So um, I will try to get this stuff posted and all the links done and everything um, and get ready for the week after um, uh, week 13, the penultimate week in the semester which is about using technology to teach composition and then the final week uh, so important about labor and composition, um, graduate school, stuff like that. So um, I hope this gives you kind of a, a, a better frame in which to read the Hartwell piece, if nothing else. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye.